It, this is what I wanted to ask Dunyasi. Mm -hmm. So in, in the behavior of the domestic <coughs> market with these syndicated loans, what does it portend also for Monainchi? Because now if the government is borrowing heavily, and of course at a higher interest rate uh, as well, we can see mortgages, uh, people now also are, are being affected uh, with the current inflation as well. This, what is the cost effect? These loans, uh, like the euro bonds and uh, any of these others, the syndicated loans, first they're syndicated because the providers, no one provider wants that level of exposure for the total amount required for the country. So you sort of share it among yourselves. Even for domestic financing, commercial banks call each other and say, oh, we have uh, this coming up, government wants to raise funds. We have this paper that we need to uh, uh, subscribe to. Uh, we can take X, can you take Y, and so on. And they come up and it is not, no, no one carries the total exposure to it. Um, the only problems that you get, like we had one with the Eurobond uh, some times back, was where the money ever got to Kenya or did not. And mm. But those are governance issues on our side, not, not, not the tool itself. Mm. It, it's useful and it is handy. Um, but what is important is that at any one time, and in one morning as uh, CS gets into his office, he'll be looking at which sources are, are, are best. Should we go domestic <coughs> and get a resource? What does it imply for a long-term cost? Or should we get uh, foreign? And what does it imply for uh, risk-adjusted costs also when you are borrowing uh, externally? And the best manager would be the one who, after optimizing, ends up with the lowest cost that would have been possible under those circumstances. One. And two, who is acting in a way that he can take himself out of that uh, bubble, no, no, it's not a bubble, trap, uh, or having to rely on these loans. You can't be dealing only with the financing side. You also deal with the expenditure side, including cutting back expenditure. Mm. Uh, so when the president started over and said, we have a step of us, uh, cut 300 billion from, from the programs because we can't afford to pay for this. We needed to have that, and I hope that will stick through that austerity mm. thing. Uh, there have been a few lines that I've said, but it's not austerity and so on. So it means that austerity had rough edges which needed to be uh, panel beaten back in uh, so that you truly can reduce your loan, uh, your, your expenditure, and then your financing requirements consequently ease off mm -hmm. but you can't even if you got all the money you needed and that's what sometimes the problem you go to the market and they are, you can get all the money you need mm. but the expenditures you're going to put it them to are not priority expenditures you're not helping the country um, uh, and there are people who have surplus resource and they're <coughs> ready to, to, to place it right. by the way at country level globally now as we speak there's only one country that ha seems to have those uh, almost looking endless but we know it's not endless resources that they can lend. It's not the U.S. anymore. China. It is China. Now, so that if you said, oh, China, give us 10 billion today, 100 billion tomorrow, give us a trillion in, in, the, in the next five years, they can probably give it to you. But can you absorb it and use it effect, uh, uh, usefully? Or are you going to turn it around and take it back to the market, investing <laughs> in, uh, uh, in, in ways you can get on that money uh, uh, without using it for the purpose you wanted? Now, I want to conclude on one note. I had forgot to say this at the beginning. Countries like Israel. Uh, Israel, when, when I was in college, uh, that's, a bit, that's a while back, maybe that's not a good example, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, was a country that was just, it was the Malawi of today. I mean, it, it was, they were better off than Malawi, but you see, Malawi was famous. It got independence at a time when it could not even raise enough revenue to, to finance uh, its wage bill. So the, the British continued to support them uh, of, of a period of time. Israel did not have, had not developed its economy to a point where they're standing on that. The U.S. was actually supporting them immensely. They have come, come a long way. One thing they don't allow, if you're an Israeli citizen, you can't keep a foreign account. The, the, the ambassadors can do that, uh, not ambassadors, the diplomats can do that and so on, but you must bring the, the money back home. Of course, they, they, they run policies that help you to protect your wealth and so Here we are running to IMF to bring us the dollars to help us rebalance. But we have individuals in this country who in total, and I'm sure that uh, uh, my colleagues here will agree with me, in total have more money than the amount of money we are seeking for from IMF by, by many factors. Right. Yeah. 
So we would not have needed to get the IMF in turn for purpose of bringing us conditional uh, foreign exchange inflow. They probably can help us just on the analytics as they do sometimes without lending. But here we are, crying foul, almost on our knees, and our own citizens have this money lying out there, uh, partly because the law has a loophole uh, on it. But I think at times like this... We, we Is it because the law has a loophole on it or because there are bugbears and fears? There, there are two... If the, we have the invasions of farms as well... They are using the, the loophole in the law, uh, but the truth of the matter is that they are themselves don't they want to have their resources. But he, but he has used a there. very good example. I, I, is it because of the confidence that their resources here uh, will be questioned? Yeah, that's in one, and also because they are not legal. To confidence the bar, yeah. I think the case, the Jewish case, is also um, patriotism. The Jewish story is a story for another day. But uh, even as I appreciate talk of interest rates, um, talk of inflation rates, and so on. An important aspect uh, when it comes to repaying even the debts that probably hasn't received sufficient attention is the foreign exchange. Why do I say this? If we had uh, debt to com country XYZ last year, maybe a hundred billion shillings worth of debt that would repay, today we are repaying 135 billion. Mm -hmm. of that. And that's quite significant, 35%. So obviously, even as uh, the economists look at ways of stabilizing interest rates, um, the, um, uh, the inflation rates, I think this aspect of foreign exchange requires much more attention. But you can peg it. You and, can, you and, can and, head and, to the and, SDR and, and, and as you borrow. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, today we're not talking about hedging, utilizing our natural resources. But I think I liked one thing that um, also Devin D said. He said, as they were going through the budget with a clinician's uh, knife, they struck out and in the end knocked out 35 billion shillings. I think those are vibes that Kenyans need to hear and see much more of. As governor was talking about, probably let me call it optics. Optics is everything. It's, it's important that you send the right signals. Maybe finally, even though the governor was talking about responsibility, yes. The, what is the beef the, between you the, and the, the governor? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I'm complimenting. Ah, the, okay. the government uh, responsibility of government officers is important, but the same needs to be said also of the opposition. Responsibility cuts both ways. They shouldn't be diverting government from doing important work. Thank you. All right, I want us just to gravitate the discussion also to a bit of what is happening with the KQ and uh, the performance contracting as well, that we're given a report. Mm -hmm. You want to say something briefly before we go there because we've got a few minutes remaining. Yeah, well, the, on the foreign exchange, um, and I think uh, Professor Gitoro already, uh, I want to repeat this point, he spoke to it. Um, part of, of it is, in fact, what do you export and yeah. what do you import? Right. Now, if you are importing everything, generally, including the toothpicks, <laughs> including toothpicks, uh, generally you are going to have difficulties uh, with a weak currency. So it goes back to domestic production, right? Absolutely. That one and way, else. the true way to support the shilling in the long run, is in fact to ensure that we have, we are producing. We should be producing our own food and we should be producing goods that we are selling to others. Mm. That is a true way to do it. Of course, uh, uh, there is a couple of other things that government can do today. For instance, in the East Africa mm. uh, community, we have already agreed going back 10 years ago that we will have one currency. Right. And you know, every year we look for uh, 10, 12 billion dollars to pay one another. Mm. So Ugandans are looking for dollars to pay us. Mm. We are looking for dollars to pay Ugandans Correct. and similarly with, uh, yeah. with Tanzanians. Yeah. It would be a simple thing of the presidents of this region signing off on the East Africa Monetary Union mm. and again you ease right. uh, the problem we are having. Professor Gituru already spoke to you could also peg uh, uh, the debt that you incur uh, on SDR and other, Absolutely. if you will, sure. neutral, uh, so that it, it doesn't hurt your currency. Mm. So government is not without um, uh, uh, options. 
again i know i don't know why uh, uh, dr shemu shodo is feeling hurt mm. when i say i believe myself as the rito murethi that key people <laughs> in government are acting in a very irresponsible manner i say irresponsible because it is inconceivable that they don't know these things and if they don't know government has sufficient brain power including the great men on this table and others to to bring about these technical uh, not even technical these practical solutions to solving the things that are uh, hurting I kenyans thought, i thought you are you doing a part of your time to me all right i have you okay there's a quick one i got yesterday i want right. to share with you sure there's this sort in town called himarian sort nice you look at the package the sort is made in pakistan Mm. It's packed in South Africa mm -hmm. and consumed in Kenya. And it's called Himalayan. <laughs> <laughs> How? Mm -hmm. It's made in Pakistan, packed in South Africa, consumed in Kenya. Mm -hmm. The domestic production. And by the way, Israel, the other day, Israel is fact, they have out now, they have filled back the Sea of Garil. Mm. from water from the Mediterranean because they know what it means to have water Thank you. for mm. internal production. Okay, uh, a bit we look